Before I fully sign off for the day, I also wanted to do a comparison of Windsor & Newton's current marker offerings. So they have the pigment markers, and I've done several videos about these, and I'm still in the process of fully testing them. They have the watercolor markers, which I have a review on my blog about them, and I also have a marker tutorial um, here on my YouTube that you guys can check out if you're interested in learning how to use watercolor markers, and I use these for the main test. And then there's also the Winsor Newton alcohol-based brush markers. Now, all three of these markers are very different and they're very interesting. These are both pigment-based markers. These are water-based and are water-soluble, which means you can use water to paint with them as you would pan watercolors or tube watercolors. These are alcohol-based, but they're also water-soluble, which means you can disperse your pigment after you've applied it using either the colorless blender, the white blender, or water. These are alcohol-based and are alcohol-soluble, which means you can disperse the dye with alcohol blenders or um, isopropyl, like rubbing alcohol, 75 to 99 percent usually will do the trick. Um, so I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison so you guys can kind of get an idea of what they look like. Here's my test from earlier where I was demonstrating the old markers against the new ones. So the pigment markers have a chisel tip like that and a bullet nib and several artists have already um, expressed a desire for a brush nib and we know that Winsor Newton does offer brush nibs for certain products because the watercolor markers are available with a brush tip. As are uh, 72 approximately of the colors they offer for their brush markers. Now, the pigment markers are a little more opaque than alcohol-based markers, and they have their own blenders. They have an alcohol-based blender and a white blender, and this is not the right kind of paper to be doing this on. I'm just using some scrap cardstock. The white will work okay. It pretty much reactivates it. See where it's kind of blue? And it also covers a little bit of the blue. The white blender is my favorite. I think the white blender is fantastic and I actually use it um, in other applications. The alcohol blender moves the pigment around without um, affecting the color of the paper underneath the way the white blender would if you're working on a colored paper. Um, let me grab a working water brush. I usually have one up here. I just have to find it. I guess I don't have one. Usually I keep one up for testing purposes, but not today. I have one that broke. That might be good enough. Nope, does not want to disperse the water. It's okay. I'm going to cheat and just dip my brush into the water reservoir of my broken water pin because I just want to show you how. So as you can see, it's kind of a little bit moving the pigment, though not nearly as much as the alcohol. So this could be useful for softening lines or doing a mixed media piece. This is a Tombow ABT colorless blender and it has some effect, although it causes some paper pilling. I don't know if you can, no, I'm gonna pull in so you guys can see. It does cause some paper pilling, but it also moves the pigment a little bit. Next is the watercolor marker. The trick with this is you wanna use it on watercolor paper first and foremost. Secondly, you want to move your pigment around while it's still wet because it's not going to blend nearly as well once it's dried. And these are a lot of fun to use and my pen is leaking. And there's several techniques for using these. 
that include direct application and um, rewetting, and you should check out my tutorial if you're interested in those. Last are the alcohol-based markers that react to alcohol solvents, like that up there. And theoretically, the white blender should, oh, it's got some blue on it. I'm gonna have to clean it better. You can use the white blender. It won't reactivate it, but it covers it so it can kind of soften the color a bit, which is one of the reasons I really like this. And let's see if the alcohol blender works. It does, okay. So the alcohol-based blender for the Windsor Newton pigment markers is a regular alcohol-based blender and it should, I'm gonna do some testing and give you guys a definitive answer later, but it should work with pretty much any alcohol-based markers. The white blender only seems to blend the pigment markers, but you can cover up or modify colors, lighten colors with the white, so that's really cool. Anyway, that was a brief overview of Windsor Newton's current graphic marker selection. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you like it, please subscribe and uh, click like, and that way I'll know that you want more content like this. And um, if you aren't finding enough of this kind of content here on my YouTube channel, I recommend you check out my blog, netasoup.blogspot.com, because I've been reviewing art supplies for the past five to six years. So have a good day, guys. Bye.